Hello, Jeff Zwerink, and welcome again to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas to equip you to be more confident in the truth of Christianity. Today, we're joined again by Erica Carlson, and we're going to explore what does quantum mechanics have to say, and does it support Eastern religions? Erica, it's great to have you back again. It's great to be here. I, I like talking to physicists. I know you got, you're a professor of physics and astronomy at Purdue University. I know quantum mechanics is a passion of yours. Yes. Um, and I, I just want to, I'm excited to talk today about the interaction of quantum mechanics with Eastern religions, because okay. it kind of has that connotation that we kind of decide what happens, okay. and quantum mechanics is just weird to start with. So <laughs> let's kind of explore into that. What are the important aspects of quantum mechanics that kind of lend to this idea or this perception that it supports Eastern religions? Okay, all right. So uh, there's, there's an idea that, that comes up that makes it sound to... Um, someone who hasn't taken a quantum mechanics course, like we have a lot of control, like we mm -hmm. can control our own reality. In fact, I know this because uh, Google watches my every move, right? So because I work on quantum stuff and I, I do web searches on quantum things, Google gives me ads related to this. And it turns out, according there to Google... There are ads related to quantum mechanics? Oh, yeah. okay. According to Google, the ads that come up for me are that I can use quantum mechanics to create my own reality. And you know, oh, that's really? awesome. They never taught me that in a physics class. <laughs> so let me tell you where that idea would come okay. from. Okay, it, 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 come, it can be traced back to the phrase, the technical phrase, observer determines reality. Okay. And I think it's basically a misunderstanding of that phrase, observer determines reality is a technical uh, phrase that doesn't quite mean what it sounds like out of context, okay? okay? First of all, it's important to notice that what physicists mean by an observer can be done by a piece of equipment that has no consciousness, okay? So a conscious so, so it's not necessarily a person, it's my camera could determine yeah. reality in that sense. It's the data taker. It's the <laughs> it's apparatus the taker, right. that takes the data, counts as an observer. So it doesn't okay. have to be a conscious observer determines reality. This is the idea that there are certain physical properties that a particle can have that may not be well defined until you take the measurement. So a great example of this is uh, the dichotomy we have between position and momentum. This is codified in Heisenberg's uncertainty mm -hmm. principle that goes something like So position like where it's located, momentum is how fast it's moving more or less. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you can totally think of it as how fast it's moving. So the more we know about where a particle is, the less we know about how fast it's moving. Mm -hmm. And vice versa, the more we know about how fast it's moving, the less we know about where it is. This right. is um, a hard and fast principle, okay? And it goes back really to the wave nature of the particle. And it um, turns out that, that it's not just quantum mechanical waves that do that. Mm -hmm. You can actually, uh, uh, I think a great place to read about this is in the Feynman lectures. Okay. He has some, some chapters on quantum mechanics and Feynman points out that this is actually just a property of waves in general. Uh, it goes back to the fact that the velocity of a particle is related to the wavelength of the wave. Mm -hmm. And so the more certain you are about where a particle is, then the sharper the wave has to be. And the fewer opportunities you have to measure the wavelength. So, 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 yeah, let, so let's kind of come in here because yeah. there's a couple of things that you've talked about that I think are going to, for somebody not familiar with right. quantum mechanics, sure. going to be hard. One is uh, just kind of this idea that um, particles are waves. I mean, okay. you, you yeah, address yeah. that. So, so wave duality. give real quickly, what is, what's going on there? Okay. I know we can't explore okay, so it all. Again, I'm gonna We're going to point to some yeah. resources later, but just yeah. briefly, what's I'm, going on? Here? I'm going to kick everyone back to the Feynman lectures on this. I love what Richard Feynman has to say about this. He says, we used to think that we needed to think in terms of particles or in terms of waves. And, and is it, is it both and or neither? He, sa he said, you know, basically we've given up. It's, it's neither or both at the same time. Mm -hmm. So in certain contexts, a quantum mechanical particle will act like a particle, a little mm -hmm. tiny point that's here and moves around. And in certain other contexts, we find that the wave nature comes to the forefront. So, so this is something very, there. yeah, very counter to, you know, we oh, look yeah. at something, something's either a particle right. or a wave, but when you get down on the small scale, that distinction is not nearly as clear. And, yes. and, and that's kind of where the observer determines reality. It's kind of like what I measure it, determines absolutely. whether it's going to behave like a particle or a wave in some sense. Absolutely. So we know, if you want to look it up and, and read a little bit more about it, the two-slit experiment shows mm -hmm. us that even a single electron, for example, has a wave nature to it, and the waves interfere with each other. And yet, when you go to measure where the electron lands at the end of your experiment, you always find a whole electron. It acts like a mm -hmm. particle. So 
it's kind of neither a wave nor a particle, or maybe it's both. Um, it's a wavicle, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I like I like the both so, better. That yeah, seems to make more yeah, sense. Yeah, and but. so they're both there. And then you know this idea that observer determines reality. When you have something like that, that 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 has a wave nature to it, waves are not completely localized objects, mm -hmm. right? So you can have a wave that kind of wiggles in a lot of different places, and um, there are certain properties that you can go and measure that may not be well defined until you take the measurement. Right, right. And that's frustrating, it's kind of annoying to us, but I think a great analogy would be, for example, think of a spinning coin, okay? Mm -hmm. If I take a coin and I flip it, I could ask the question, is it heads or is it tails? But if I take a coin and I spin it, right? So mm -hmm. just let it be in that spin, and then I ask it the question, is it heads or tails? Well, it's not well defined while it's spinning. But if I ask the question and say, hey, are you heads or tails, right. and smack it, it will be it will be tails. So that's an analogy for what happens in a lot of quantum measurements. There could be a property mm -hmm. that wasn't well defined until we took the measurement. Uh, and it goes back to the, to the wave right. nature of the thing. Okay, so how does this lead to people saying, okay, we yeah. determine what's going on, or right. you know, kind of the Eastern mysticism, if you will. Right. And, and what do we do with that? How do we engage that conversation in a way that draws it back to okay. Christianity being true? I see. Well... So uh, I, I think it is important to uh, remember that observer determines reality. We mean it in a very limited sense, right, okay? okay. Um, and, and in fact, it really means that there are certain properties that don't become well defined until you make the measurement. It doesn't mean we have control. This is part of why that's really an like, important distinction. So yeah. it's 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 that we determine what we measure, not we determine yes. what's actually there, if you, you will. That's never a, control. The that's outcome. an important point. You never yeah. control the outcome. And uh, this is why I like the spinning coin analogy so much. It is an analogy. It'll break mm -hmm. down at some point. But uh, one of the beauties of the analogy is it shows you that when you go to take a quantum measurement, we don't control the outcome. Mm -hmm. There's a probabilistic event or at least our calculation of it right. is probabilistic and we don't control the outcome all right so we can't use quantum mechanics to create our own mm -hmm. reality you don't you don't have control so so that really doesn't lend the idea support to the idea that we can like heal our cancer by thinking rightly it doesn't lend support to the right. idea that we're going to right. make the world a certain place so quantum mechanics just doesn't do that at the end of the day right right and it's actually pretty tricky to get quantum particles to do what you want Okay, and, that's fair. And, yeah, and and in fact, uh, you know, there's there's uh, uh, the United States now has the National Quantum Initiative, where mm -hmm. we're going to be as a as a country putting a lot of resources into the development of quantum technologies. The reason we're going to have to work so hard at it is because it's so hard to control right. these quantum particles. It's like they're think of them as like little pieces of like you know finger jello. You kind of try to smack them down and they move, they move. right? Uh, it they're is. It's hard incredible. to control. And it's even as a physicist, yeah. I find quantum mechanics difficult. I, I know and you. And fun. I, right? Fair enough. It's really fair fun enough. To think so. about. I know you are uh, have just recently taught a course about yes. this, so I would kind of want to give people a chance. How do they go find that course, oh, and what are they okay. what are they going to get if they okay. go? Got, just briefly. So. Sure. So I just uh, finished filming uh, with the the great courses, uh, a course called Understanding the Quantum World. It's mm -hmm. a it's like a ninety nine percent equation free trip through quantum land. Nice. Uh, Twenty four lectures, half an hour each, and it's aimed at people who who don't have a degree in physics but like to learn. So mm -hmm. you don't need to have any prior physics knowledge. I'll take you from wherever you are to learning about the quantum world. Very good. Well, thanks, Eric. I really yeah. appreciate your comments on this. This is an important topic, and so I'm excited to have this idea out there and addressed in a good way. You know, when we look at the world, there are some scientific ideas that seem to get legs of their own that we can go support these Eastern philosophies. But when we look at quantum mechanics, it's something that really is weird, but it doesn't allow us to control things. It doesn't support Eastern religions. In fact, when you explore into it, it makes the most sense in a Christian worldview. I would encourage you to go check out Erica's great course that she's taught, but also go look on YouTube. She's got a number of videos. Look up Erica Carlson on YouTube, and you'll get some other resources that summarize some of the quantum mechanical principles that help you to be involved in this important conversation about quantum mechanics and use it in a way to spread the gospel.